girls, babies in your diapers. Welcome to the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Hoy. That's me, Tiberius. Today we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video about teddy bears, a book featuring a missing cat, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Monica Mason. <laughs> Monica is a stage manager, teacher, and a promotions director. Hi, Tiberius. Thank you for having me today. This is going to be fun. Uh huh. Yes, it is. <laughs> and today we're going to start off with a video of the week, and this is going to be a squeeze. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Teddy Simulator. So this is a game on the Roblox platform. This game is made by Domino Games. Because it is on Roblox, you're able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free. This is the only game that Domino Games has released on Roblox. So you enter the game and you have a shop in front of you and some gems around the area. You have a small teddy bear and each time you click your mouse, it gives you some energy. Then you go to the shop and sell the energy for money. This money you can take to another shop and upgrade your bag on how much energy you can carry and you can upgrade the teddy bear so you can get more energy per click instead of getting one per click. So now you walk around and you collect items from the island around you, like gems. And you go ahead and you click with your teddy in your hand. As you upgrade, you can also buy pets. This is purchased with gems. With enough gems, you can get pets that increase the amount of gems, money, or energy you get. Either way, the idea is to get better and more stuff. (laughs) <laughs> I give Teddy Simulator 10 out of 10 stars because you can go like try them and I tried to get my dad to try it and he actually liked it. I think everyone who likes cute stuff animals should play this game. So would you say how old do you think you should be to play this game? Like what age do you think might be too young to play the game? For too young I would say... Five years old? Five or less. But... If six are over, then you're perfect. So about six years old is, is yes. where, okay, cool. Because if your dad liked it, then there's just no limit to how old you have to be. Just as do you minimum. Like, do you like cute stuffed animals? Um, I'm not really a stuffed animal kind of person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stuffed animals are cute, but this seems like a pretty cool game. So yeah. Over 40 years, they have Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact White House Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. The Tadview Show would like to thank one of our dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom Braille ADA signs, vinyl littering, to trophies and awards. They can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407 898 and now it's time for the book of the week, The Case of the Cat's Meow. This book is written by Crosby Bonsell. She wrote over 40 children's books, and this is one of them. Now we're at the back of the book. So, Monica, do you want to do the honor? I would. Thank you very much. All right. The four members of the Private Eyes Club, Skinny, Wizard, Snitch, and Tubby, solve the baffling case of the missing cat. So, there was a cat named Mildred, and Snitch, her owner, loved her. He wanted to protect her, so he set up an alarm and a trap in the clubhouse of his friends Skinny, Tubby, and his brother, Wizard. It was a string across the door with a bucket of water, so it would fall on anyone that did not step over the string. The next day, the cat was gone. 
They went around town looking for the cat and put out food by the clubhouse, but instead all the cats in the area showed up for the food. <laughs> so they found all the dogs they could to find the way to make the cats go away. Then they had to find a way to get rid of the dogs. Finally, they found that Mildred's food dish was still getting eaten. So they put flour on the ground so that they could track them. When they followed the footsteps, they were surprised to find... But, you know, I can't ruin the story oh. for you. <laughs> you have to go to the library and read the book yourself. Well, I give the case of the cat's meow 8 out of 10 stars because I really enjoyed the cool surprise at the end. And I liked all of the different traps that they tried to protect and find the cat. Very cool. That sounds like a really cute book. See, David Smith, law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? (laughs) Mid-State Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Mid-State Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. And now it's time for the interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, Monica Mason. <laughs> Monica is a stain manager, teacher, and a promotions director. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I think this is great. I'm actually enjoying myself very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So you got started in radio while in college. What could you interest in radio? So, I've always loved music, but I don't sing, I don't play an instrument, but I love being around music. I've listened to music my whole life. I used to want to be a dancer when I was younger, and when I got to college, I said, I want to be a part of something. I need to be around music, and just so happened my college radio station was looking for DJs to be radio DJs, Mm -hmm. and I went and I did an audition, and they didn't pick me. So I became, so I went back about two weeks later and I said, hey, you guys didn't pick me, but I want to be here. So what else can I do? And they said, and the, the woman at the desk said, well, the promotions director is about to graduate. He could use some help. Why don't I introduce you? So she introduced me to a guy named Jason, who was the promotions director at the time. I became his assistant. And then he thought I was doing such a good job that he didn't need to have his job anymore so I got his job and became the promotions director at my college radio station and a DJ. Wow. <laughs> so you learned about the business of music and promoting stations. Which is more fun? Um, I don't know that one is more fun than the other. They're two very different things because music, the music industry is not the same as radio. Radio is broadcasting and then the music industry is the music industry. So the, they need each other, but they're very different. Um, but I guess promotions is a lot of fun. I still do a lot with marketing and promotions. So I guess promotions is more fun. Okay. So you also traveled all over the world to get your experience. <laughs> is there a big difference in radio based on where you live? Well, I mean, I'm from here, the United States, so I'm originally from Pennsylvania, which is up north. It's on the northeast. Mm -hmm. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is music is very regional. So music that's popular up there has not been popular down here. Um, So it's just a little bit different. When you move around for radio, you learn about the music in that area, mm-hmm. and you become part of the culture. So you, when you get on the radio and you talk to people, you can relate a little bit more to where they're from. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. So what's the best part about working in the radio and music business? Oh my goodness. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's a lot of fun meeting celebrities because you find out how normal they actually really are. Um, everybody makes a big deal about them, but they're just like you and me. Mm-hmm. So who is the biggest celebrity that you have ever seen? Oh my goodness. Um, my goodness. Okay, uh, a lot of them are going to be people that you just don't know. <laughs> um, so one is a, a group called Rufus Du Soul. They're from Europe. Um, that was a lot of fun to meet them. I know you don't know who that is. <laughs> it's okay. Um, there was a guy named Shaggy. Um, that was fun. Um Man, I'm trying the Pussycat Dolls, which is an all-girl group. Um, who else? Oh my goodness, there's been so many. I really cannot think of. But yeah, that's that's the few I can name for now. Uh-huh. <laughs> So were you nervous when you met them? I wasn't. Uh Um, That's one thing about being in the industry that you have to kind of control when you're working. You can't be a fan in that moment. So I was usually working when I met all these people. So I don't have time to be nervous. I'm there to do a job. And um, ah, Brian McKnight, he's another one. And Tony Braxton. Okay, I knew it would come to me. Um, So no, I wasn't nervous. I don't have time to be nervous. Okay. Well, since you worked in a number of places, if you could visit anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Are you asking in terms of music or just in general? General. Just in general? Um, There is a beautiful place in the world called the Maldives, and it's like paradise. I would love to go there. What do you mean by paradise? It's gorgeous. The water is clear blue. There's little huts on top of the water. You can just come out of your bedroom and dive into the water. It's there's nothing around you. It's just beautiful. Okay. You'll have to look it up. It's stunning. If we go there, you better take me with you. No, I know where I'm. I know what I'm doing. (laughs) I am sleeping in my swimsuit. Oh yeah, so you can just wake up and yep. Get my stuff off and then just. That's that's what a lot of people do. My mom and dad. Yep, that would be fun. Not going Well, what is the hardest part about working in the radio business? Oh, sadly, the challenge with working in radio is that um, radio focuses on advertising. I mean, it needs advertising to survive. And when yeah. businesses are not doing well and people don't have money to spend on advertising, it's hard to keep your radio programs going. So that's... One of the biggest challenges. Um, And then also, it's a very unstable industry in that if one style of music is really popular at a time, the station could be doing really well. And then if the climate of music changes, then that station can flip what we call flip formats. And then your station can go, hey, we got to fire everybody and hire all new people. It happens all the time. So it's a big challenge with the industry. Mm -hmm. So what is your greatest achievement while working with this industry? I would say my greatest achievement has been working my way from promotions to being on air here in Orlando and doing the morning show, middays, broadcasting live, doing music festivals out right here downtown Orlando. So I would say the the working my way up to being exactly where I wanted to be when, when I was in radio. So you're working your way up downtown. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> yes. Well, what show, to be honest? Um, what do you mean, what show? Like, what show I work downtown? So, our radio station used to host music festivals downtown. We would invite celebrities and music artists to come and perform at a stage downtown. And we, as the radio station, were hosting it. So those of us that were on-air personalities, like yourself, would come out on stage and we'd get the crowd all hype up and then introduce the artists. And the artists come out on stage with their dancers and their band and they would perform. So we did a couple um, block parties. The station here was 95.3 Party at the time. It's now... 
Power 95.3. So this is what I was talking about when I said stations flip format. So it went from being a dance, high energy station to um, hip hop and kind of uh, popular R and B music now. But that's what we used to back. That's what's what we used to do. Fired everybody. Hired new people. Yeah, they let a lot of people go. Some people stayed. Um, some people were able to stay, and then some people left. So. Yes, some people had to go, yes. What is the craziest situation that you have run into while working in radio slash music? Um, I will say with radio, one of the craziest things that happened was um, actually, it's actually kind of sad. It was September 11th and we all had to, we were on the air I mean, we're always on the air 24-7, but we all came into the station and, you know, there was a moment where we all had to kind of be together and, um, you know, we had to take calls from listeners. People were worried. People were scared. A lot of people thought we knew more than anybody else because they think we're getting information that they're not getting. Um, so for radio, that was probably one of one of the craziest. Another one was... Um, there was a really bad storm and we got stuck at the radio station and we had to sleep there. So that was interesting. That might have been fun. <laughs> it, it, was, it was like a giant sleepover. If you've oh, ever had yeah. sleep, have you had a sleepover before? No. Oh, we're going to have to talk to your dad about I that. I've never. It was like a giant sleepover and we had, um, thankfully, we had lots of coffee. So, and some snacks in the vending machine. So, who helped you motivate or inspire you the most in following your dream? Oh, boy. Um, that's a good question. I would probably say, believe it or not, it was somebody who didn't think what I was doing was, like, real work. So, um, I'm going to say my mom. Because it was something I really wanted to do. And to her... To a lot of people, working in radio and TV is is entertainment. It's so much fun. They don't realize it's actually work. So the fact that, you know, my my mom was like, you need a real job. I'm like, this is a real job, and I'm going to do it. And that just kind of pushed me. Sometimes, you know, when people think they're helping and they're really not um, (laughs) in so many ways, um, the fact that she didn't think what I was trying to do was real work was a big motivator for me because I wanted to prove to her that I could do it, and I did do it. Oh. So that was a huge push for me. Uh, well, what if I was to go my listeners if they wanted to grow up and work in radio? You know, like me. Um, my first thing would be to be patient. Okay. Always be creative. Okay. Um... Don't be afraid to work long hours because it's going to happen. I need it. Yeah. <laughs> you already know that. Yes. Um, always w- read. Reading is good because okay. reading helps you with your pronunciation. Okay, then we got to put that on my right? list. Right. So reading is, is always good and um, practice. Oh. I used to practice in front of the mirror all the time. Well, do you write your scripts? I only write two parts. Okay, but My you know what? writes the rest. But that's good. You know why? Because believe it or not, something a lot of people don't know is what we call copywriting, which is actually a part of being in radio. You should have good writing skills as well because sometimes you're asked to write what we call copy. Sometimes you have to write commercials or like you, you have to write, you know, write out a script or something. Mm-hmm. So writing is good. Here's the thing, though, is with commercials, you got to write exactly what you're going to say. But when you're on the air and you and now you have to remember, I'm coming from playing music, not a talk show like you. We just use bullet points because we don't want to read. You want to sound natural. So what people tend to have a tendency to do is if they write full sentences, they're going to sound like they're reading. You don't want to sound like you're reading when you're doing a show where you're trying to engage people into the music that you're playing. Okay. Okay. Well, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? 10 years? Well, that's not that long ago, but <laughs> um, 10 years ago, I would probably tell myself to go to law school. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I would tell myself to follow through and go to law school. So I see from your bio that you were also a teacher. Well, how did you get into it? That happened by pure accident. I went in to be a guest speaker. I spoke to the class. The person who brought me in really liked um, how I handled myself and um, asked me, hey, you want a job? And I said, sure. So I stayed and I became a teacher. (laughs) So I see that you're also a stage manager. Can you tell me more about that? Sure. Um, My job as a stage manager is to work with the talent and their manager. So when the talent comes in, I make sure that the hospitality department has what's supposed to be in in their dressing room or their trailer or whatever. I make sure they get on stage on time. I make sure they get off stage and get back to their dressing room or their their trailer. I make sure their writer... Um, is taken care of and a writer is part of the contract that says this is what they're supposed to have you know in their dressing room or for the stage or whatever um, and then I make sure this, the show continues to move on time uh-huh. Yep. now of all of the jobs you have done which is your favorite and why I'm gonna go uh, okay I have two I'll start with teaching because I have an opportunity to encourage students who are trying to be a part of the music industry and I'm teaching them things they should know to help protect them and protect the music that they create um, and protect them from people who are trying to do them harm in really bad contracts. Um, So I would say I probably enjoy teaching the most. And then after teaching, I would say stage managing because I get to travel. I get to, I like being busy. I like to run around and I like to talk to the artists and I like meeting their, their managers. So I would say teaching first because I'm helping other people. And then I would say stage managing. Okay. What is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Um, you didn't ask me if I've ever fallen off my motorcycle. Have you? Yeah. That's part of learning. Part of learning is failing. Did it hurt? Oh, it hurt. Oh. It hurt. But you oh, know what? Me. I got up and I got right back on my motorcycle. Well, is there anything I should think my listeners should know about you? About me? Um, that I never stop trying and that I will always try something new. And I enjoy any new project that comes my way. So... Yeah, you never know what you'll see me do next because I got a whole list of things that I want to do. Yep. Okay. Well, do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners to want to follow you? Um, if they like, they could find me at Mo Says V O M O S E Z V O. Um, you can find me on Facebook under that name. Um, my website's still kind of under construction, but it's the same, mosesvo.com. That's how you can find me. All right. Well, thank you, Monica, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Math Corners? Uh, we'll see. Let's see. I might be able to stick around. Aw, Dad, my computer's slow again, and I can't play my games. Call your computer solutions today, and we will scan for viruses and clean that computer up remotely. And make it fast again. Our phone number is 407-826-0810. Thanks, Dad. My computer's fast again. Now I can do my homework. Thanks for calling your computer solutions at 407-826-0810. The Tribeo Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Air Boat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an air belt and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! And now it's time for 
for Math Corners. Thank you, Monica, for helping me with Math Corners. This week, I've been back at school, and we were talking about greater than and less than, as well as equal to. Now, I know this seems easy, but pay attention anyway. Okay. <laughs> Remember last week, we covered the place values. The more digits to the left, the larger the number in the place value. And we counted all the way to decimalian. So when comparing numbers, you have to ensure you know the place value and then the number itself. First, you have to compare place values. If one number has a greater place value than the other, then it is larger. If both numbers have the same largest place value, then you compare each value from left to right and see if they have the same numbers in each value. If all the digits are the same, then they are equal. But if going from left to right, two of the numbers are different, then one that has to be the larger digit makes that entire number larger than the other. So nine sextillion is greater than seven sextillion. But ninety-seven thousand four hundred thirty is smaller than ninety-seven thousand five hundred and thirty. See, the difference was in the hundreds, please. So, Monica, do you now know all about greater than and less than? Huh. Uh, we, we'll guess if we'll find out, huh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, thank you, Monica, for your help with me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that was pretty cool, Tiberius. I like that. Okay. Definitely, that was pretty cool for me, too. <laughs> The Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the Heart of a Lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about leadership. For me, I think leadership is the act of loving what is good, having self-control, and being disciplined. The qualities of leadership are providing guidance and direction, organization, and being a positive influence on others. I saw leadership in Mrs. Dalalo, my teacher. She provided guidance and direction in showing the class how to make poems and encouraging us to read them. She provided a positive influence on others by showing us how to release our thoughts onto paper and clean out our minds. So, Monica, did you see or use leadership at all this week? Um, I use leadership all the time um, because... As a teacher, that's my job is to lead my students. And um, that is true. Yep. But have I seen leadership? I have. Um, Even though I'm a teacher, as a teacher, there is somebody who is um, responsible for me as an employee. And I truly am grateful for my, there's actually two of them that oversee uh, my department. And I think they do a fantastic job of listening to our concerns and taking them into consideration and being what we call an advocate for our concerns as as educators when it comes to things we want to make sure that our students are getting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, of all the Heart of the Lion virtues, which is your favorite? I think integrity is my favorite. I think integrity is hugely important because how do you get people to believe in what you're saying if you don't have your integrity? Um, You know, in my opinion, as part of integrity, integrity is there's honesty, right? Um, And that's very important when you want... When you want people to believe in you, you have to have integrity. Mm -hmm. And I think accountability is also a part of integrity. Being able to say, you know what, I did this and I and I made a mistake and being able to to acknowledge that you made a mistake, you fix it and you move forward. So I think integrity is my favorite. Okay, And we should always try and be line strong in everything we do. Shouldn't Mm -hmm. we? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think that's wonderful. Mm hmm. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Monica Macy.
Jason for being on my show. It has been so much for talking with you today. And I have to visit one of your studios one day and see you at work. I can get you in there for sure. You know what? Maybe I'll do that. Even though I don't work there anymore, I still have friends that work in radio. Maybe we can get you up there. Okay. And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show. To us, Tiberius! The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boyd. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Rune manager, Danny Boyd. And your program host, Tiberius Boyd. The Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.